Hello everyone, thank you very much for waiting. Uh, I think probably everyone's on board now. This is session number two, I think, of 11. Um, so we actually have a bunch of events today and tomorrow spanning all sorts of different topics from this design talk about trends for 2021, through talking to our fabric technologist about test processes, through uh, new product development uh, discussions. So loads of interesting things, I hope, uh, to talk about, and I hope you'll attend a few others. Uh, but obviously we want to get into what you're here for right now, which is to meet our designers and to talk about what they think uh, they're seeing in the market and what they think is to come in 2021 in design trends in general, and especially in fabrics. So just to explain what we're gonna do for the next hour, we're gonna definitely spend a little bit of time at the start introducing Demi and Lise. Uh, to explain you know, what it is they do at Edmund Bell, what their background is, where their interest in design really originated. Then we are going to talk about some of these trends, uh, both aesthetic trends and also, I guess, implementation trends and more practical things. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we're going to give you a little sneak peek at what is new at Edmund Bell, uh, hoping that you will come back at a later time to uh, basically enjoy a session on new product altogether. So without further ado, Let's introduce Lisa and Demi. Should we go with Demi first? Yeah. Demi, can you tell us, I guess, you know, where did your, what's your background in design? Why are you interested and how did you get involved with EP? So I've always had a passion for art and design from being a little girl, drawing and things. And then just following my passion for school, art being my favourite subject, and then going to college to study art and design for two years. That was quite good because you got to learn a bit about textiles, graphics and photography mm -hmm. and then I just preferred and loved my passion for textiles so I went more into the textiles route. Yeah. I think it's more like the prints that caught my eye the most and then like obviously what the weaves can do, textures, the actual physical fabric. It might yeah. actually better explain for the viewers actually at the moment that um, whilst Lisa and Demi work together, I think, cooperatively on most things. And mm -hmm. um, probably the weight of print design lies with Demi. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of the new designs that you'll see going on to Fabric Hub, and we'll talk about that later, are Demi's designs. Yeah. And then from um, college, I went on to university, studied at Bolton University for three years, where I graduated with a first degree in textile and service pattern design. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that was more more the print side of things, working, drawing and painting and then using CAD software to like manipulate them into designs and patterns, mm. um, experimental colour and scale, so that was quite exciting. And yeah, then I was lucky enough to uh, be picked up and come straight into the industry from the university, which was very lucky. First yeah. job. Yeah, <laughs> first <laughs> job at EB, so I joined EB in July 2019. So all it's been, yeah. It's a rush past, isn't it? Yeah. So, and then, yeah, still there. <laughs> yeah. At least so you've got a, a, a more, a longer, let's say, a passage past. <laughs> I was going to say a chicken past, and then I thought, no, no, no. <laughs> you have a chicken past, you have an interest in history. Yeah, I, no, I like, yeah, like, I, I was always <laughs> going to be destined for, for, for the creative world, I think. Yeah, <laughs> with, with with a mother who loved to kind of you know draw and paint and, and sew particularly you know so um, you know my 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 parents took us out to um, to Kampala East Africa so we you know grew up in in Africa so I think that sort of cemented the, the kind of travel book yeah. really in me and the, and the experience of different cultures and completely so on aesthetics so straight away yeah yeah. yeah. and um, and then yeah landed in back in the UK and you know school as usual. Voices came then with regards to, you know, sort of university and so on and so forth. And I can remember having a discussion with my father thinking that I was absolutely nuts <laughs> to think about going to art school and what, what was I going to do afterwards, you know, so. So no, I, I you know, he was proud of me when I graduated with a, with a first from um, West Surrey College of Art and Design. Um, and then um, thereafter, I, I sort of, I don't know, encouraged with, with the excitement of the freelance world. And sort of, I went off to, to um, the um, um, Exhibition. Royal College of Art. Oh, okay. the word I was looking for. Yeah. Royal College of Art to do, to do a short business studies course. Yeah. Um, 
cross council grant to, and the man power service commission grants just set me like in, in, in my own world really for, yeah. for, for, for so essentially answers. making your own decisions and so, you know to start and a couple of years a couple of nice successes you know there and then um i sort of i guess tumbled into um commercial textiles on the domestic side and and there you know really sort of grew gained experience mm. um and um you know managed collections and so on and so forth um and this um, is something that i think we, we will be drawing out later is um it's nice that you, you know you have a bit of experience in crossover almost you know mm. and i think we talked mm. about apparel as well mm. apparel mm. experience and domestic mm. experience and the fact that contract doesn't need to look contract certainly a lot of the trends are on the opposite yeah, direction aren't they? yeah, yeah. And, I, and i think that's sort of re really over the last 10 years i've been sort of gathering experience across various areas you know so mm. working with some mills working here on the contract side and i think it's that kind of wealth and breadth of experience really that sort of helps that helps kind of you know yeah the the the, the growth within you know the sort of contract side yeah, that's really exciting so and then one one other thing to say obviously i pointed out that demi's a lot of Demi's time is spent on print design, um, really key, or at least is really key um, uh, part to play, I think, uh, for us in normal contract selling towards, you know, uh, normal hotel projects and what have you, is colour as well. And, and, and the construction, of course. Construction and colour, absolutely. So, absolutely. Because, you know, uh, one thing that I think we hear quite a lot, especially when we're offered in places like the States, is our colour palettes are quite fresh and forward thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, and typically relatively broad for a contact range as well, and we have Lisa to thank for, for these things. So I think, now that we've introduced you guys, yes. let's get stuck in. <laughs> I think um, before we actually go into what specific trends you see coming up, mm. it might be nice to explain to people where it is, how it is you inform yourselves. So, you know, where do you get this information? A year like this must be very tricky, right? Yeah, I mean, we, we all know we, we, Paris. Yeah, we, we're des <laughs> we desperately miss Paris this year, of course, yeah. and and and, and the, the the usual run of shows, you know. So typically at the beginning of the year we start with with Frankfurt. Yeah. So it, it that that's more commercial. It's not quite as juicy and sort of creative. But really I guess happy. a good start for you to frame your thoughts for for the other shows that you go to. I think I think yeah. once we've done that, I think once we've done Paris. Mm -hmm. There's the Birmingham show. I think that kind of cements the, the, the sort of trend, you know. Maison et Objet as well is a good place to sort of gather in, intelligence, really, I think, across yeah. a whole gamut of, of, of general interior trends, you know, because Maison, of course, is not just fabric. It's interiors, it's props, it's styling, yeah. it's towels, it's bedding. Yeah. So it's, it's a huge place. So the sort of place where you, you gather your intelligence on certain colours, certain themes, and then you could start to track it really through what was going on through the other events. I think that's yeah. generally how it tends to work. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah. in the absence of all of these exciting shows, you know, we've not been to a one in absolutely ages. Yeah, Very 12, sad. 12, 12, yeah, heading on for 12 months now, isn't it? So. Yeah, I checked the last time, the last time, checked, you know, last one yeah. that we went to as, as a company. So, what do you do in the absence of those events then? How are you getting your information? Well, well, thank goodness, really, for the internet, yeah, really. Yeah. So thank goodness for you know for blogs, for Instagram, digests, you know, newsletters, um, things like virtual galleries, virtual exhibitions, you know, um, all of those sorts of things are the kind of you know areas that we'd be looking at. Mm -hmm. I think we're probably quite in, in, well enough informed, yeah. I think, really yeah. through this through this period, but but really climbing the walls for yeah. the for a flight and a journey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a journey. A journey. <laughs> yeah. Okay, super. Um, so, in terms of, you, you did mention there um, that, you know, Maison Yerbe, for example, it's not purely fabrics, is it? Mm -hmm. It's, it's mm -hmm. everything to do with materials. Mm -hmm. um, within our range, you know, I already touched on the fact that Edmund Bell has been known for plain ranges, mm -hmm. uh, but now we have so much of a range. We don't just have the light control, blackouts, and what have you. We have upholstery, we have weave, we have now print, yeah. we have everything going on. How when you when you are seeking to create a new range or put through a new you know a new, you idea, a new idea into a range, mm -hmm. how do you get a bit of consistency across the, the collection? Because how do you brand the collection? In ter in terms of um, substrate, you talk well, of course, or, or anything. You know, how do you you know obviously the fact that we we do have weed collections and plain, we do have uh, you know uh, new print collections. How how do you ensure I guess an identity, a thread of identity, is running through all of that? Uh, um, 
a, a lot of that I think would be linked through colour. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think there's I think there's a thread. You know, I think you know co coordination then will 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 follow. I think if there's if, there, if there's some you know sort of overlap. Completely right. Then. You I've know, about that in and, and, yeah. and then of course yeah. contrast. You know, so you might have you know coordinating colours or, or or certainly the sort of contrasting element. Yeah. Um, and certainly now as we see. Um, um, texture being such a massive trend, yeah. you know, I think that's really impacting, you know, in a lot of the product categories that, that we're obviously kind of working. Definitely, yeah. yeah. I know we'll touch on that a little bit further down. But I know I'm, I'm yeah. going to going to make this point because yeah. I'm going to make it many times throughout this. I think designers at Edmund Bell are probably sick of hearing from from the salespeople. They ask, "What do you want?" <laughs> <laughs> and we always say the same thing: "Cause dry, yeah, dry, linen, <laughs> yeah." And yeah, I know they're sick of hearing it, but what's nice is actually that, especially in this last year, there have been other things like velvets that are obviously there's a massive appetite for those. Yeah. They're not dry and dusty. Yeah. You know, we can have a bit of, of a variety in there. Um, but no, as you say, you know, the textures are, have been really, really important, especially when we're purveyors of predominantly planes at them. Yeah, yeah and, 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 and texture is a great way to give variety. Yeah, you know, because there, there's such a huge array of textures, you know, within all of this, you know, so you, 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 you know, that there can be a little bit of shine if you want shine, although shine is, you know, much less of a trait. Yeah, then, you know, but, but building up the layers of those textures, I think, could be quite nice. Really, really good example of <coughs> probably our luster upholstery range, actually, where, you know, it has a good degree of shine, but actually it's a mixed texture. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not, uh, you know, we, we don't go full out shine anymore, and what about that subtlety, like you said. Yeah, yeah. So I think another key question that we wanted to ask about, you know, you've touched on um, uh, domestic trend mm -hmm. and, and I think um, what we've been trying to say actually to people, even in the last session we did, was, uh, you know, we, we tried to, we're trying to make uh, a domestic look, a high-end look suitable for contract. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's, is there a, you know, a major delineation between design for domestic and design for contract? I you don't know? so. No. I, I, I think I think less, yeah. much less so yeah. these days. You know, I think we're we're blurring barriers even between the domestic world and the contract world, mm -hmm. and and also between the fashion world, interestingly, and the the the, the, yeah. the, the, the um, contract world and the domestic world. Because you know, er, er, there's there's a lot of influences going on around. You know, between you know couture designers doing home ranges, yeah, you know, yeah. and th there's a lot of that sort of thing going on. But, but more pertinently in our world, people actually want to go places or, you know, recuperate after hospital um, uh, um, operations, yeah. you know, in a sort of homely Homely-looking setting. environment. Yeah. You know, so there's, a, and we see there, that in care home. Yeah, less institutionalized, I think, in the care world, you know, I think it's a big problem. Even elderly care less. nowadays, you know, it's yeah. Yeah, far from the institutional kind of things you used to see in the past. It's like four or five star hotels, you yeah. know. Yeah, look at look at some of the residential options that are yeah. that are being you know, developed at the moment. They are very much like that. I think I mean we're gonna come on to this, Demi, but obviously some of the actual design trends in contract are drawing much more on uh, on what we would maybe typically have thought of as you know domestic setting designs as well. Things like um, like English country house. Yeah, like the British houses and all that they are that's in there that they are. And I think one of the big considerations here with regards to the, the sort of contracting domestic world is, is, the, is the function of polyester, really. Because, you know, polyester has this fantastic aptitude to do so much more than, 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 a, than a lot of other fibres. You know? yeah. And because, yeah. you know, the contract world is, is filled with polyester, mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that, that there, there's, a, there's a general consensus that it can't be as exciting, that it can't be can't possibly be as I'm really glad you bring yeah. as a normal, um, you know, sort of range of, of, of products. Natural, natural products. And, it, you know, I, I think sometimes, I, I certainly know when I was at art school, that the, the, the more constraints you have on yourself, the more creative I think you yeah. can actually be. Yeah. And I think that's the kind of attitude that I want well, to Well, we certainly, we certainly yeah. impose a load of restraints on you when you go into yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. It needs to meet this, this, this standard, and it needs to be this width, and it needs to be on stock, and you know, yeah. you have MOQs that you have to bear in mind as well. So it's completely different. Uh, so I think, I think, you know, I think polyester has this great aesthetic in a way that, that, can, that can be a lot of things. And I think, you know, clever, clever, you know, sort of creation, mm -hmm. Um, we have a great working um, um, cooperation with our mills, yeah. 
um, you know, who have a super technical knowledge, don't they? And you know, and their experience in weaving and construction and our knowledge and experience in colour and design, I think really, you know, helps facilitate the, the, the vehicle really to, 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 to good, you know, good designs. And that's another thing that I would point out is that, especially with Lisa, she's got an awful lot of history with exactly like you said, mm. construction. So mm. it's not it's not merely saying, okay, this is how it's to look, it's this, this is how it's to be achieved. Yeah. That's really important here. Yeah. Um, right, okay. I think really interesting that you brought up polyester because we, uh, Stephen and I touched on this on the previous session and I'm mm -hmm. hoping that we'll talk about it more with Ashley right. in the subsequent sessions when we come to yes. you know, sustainability. Performance. Yeah. Because, and I think you're right that mm -hmm. um, now especially, polyester offers a lot more than it did in the past. So I remember Discovery Blackout, which is a bestseller. My texture blackout still does very well, but it was probably as matte as we could make it back then. At the time, yeah. yes. yes. Now, yeah. Quantum, which is an upcoming blackout, again, we're going yeah. to show you this later, um, is super matte, isn't it? It really... It yeah. 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 And I think, I think because, the, because there is such a big trend in that dry yeah. sort of look, I think mills and yarn suppliers have worked very hard to try and achieve you know when you've got customers banging at the door saying yeah. we want dry we want dusty we want linen yeah. you know, and they have to, <laughs> and, and, and recycled yeah you know they have to respond yeah. and they have to listen so and i think price points so this is everything you know all things yeah. that you're bearing in mind with yeah. 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 and i think i think they you know they are very clever people that come up with great solutions i think for us yeah. okay so we are going to talk about specific aesthetic design trends i think which is uh, the exciting stuff. <laughs> so I think, uh, Demi, I think one thing that you would immediately raise that you were interested in talking about was mm. 70s. Yeah. Um, I think I mentioned when we were talking about this yesterday that um, certainly we've certainly seen many different decades styles coming through in apparel. Uh, you've got some really ill-advised 90s trainers and puffer jackets yeah. and stuff on the market. <laughs> but, but like, you know, flares and cords yeah. and so things like that. And things like that. There is one here that's quite... Bit like that, it's just like got the block shapes, which is quite nice. The large geometric, yeah, geometrics, mm -hmm. yes. yeah. And you can do those in like weave and embroidery as well, which is quite exciting. We saw we saw a lot of that in Paris, didn't yeah. we? Particularly, you know, where yeah. the where this kind of look had been translated into some very kind of funky curves, beautiful embroidery stitches. Yeah. You know, so there was there was it, 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 as well, yes. or is that not part of the two? Um, this is more no, matte colour. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it was it was more about block colours, and I yeah. think a little bit more about bringing that kind of lively colour palette yeah, into yeah. into the mix, really. Um, and you know, certainly, certainly, I think you know, good, good kind of crazy colours to, yeah. to to throw in to throw into those sorts. No, no seventies brown bathrooms coming back anytime. Uh, not not no. quite. <laughs> So, um, Demi, I think again, one of the ones that you had raised was um, abstract art. Oh, yeah. That's, this has been coming on and off. good for you on the print side, yeah, I think, really, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Especially with the prints, you can really capture the, the beauty of the mark making of the brushes and the watercolour marks and things like that. And You've got one behind you, actually, that, you know, that's yeah, actually like paint splatter. Yeah. yeah, things like that are really big. And also, really over, oversizing the prints as well, that's quite a big thing with the more abstract uh, And we've also seen that in Walpole, haven't we? Yeah. You know, even again in Paris, you yeah, can see of those large macro yeah. patterns yeah. that we were seeing on, on, on wallpaper. So. Something you, you, you kind of touched on that there, part of it is that, especially digital printing, which is how we do yeah. our printing, um, is so good at drawing out the detail as well. So yeah. it's, mm. you can and see the individual the, the splat. <laughs> Yeah. And yeah, also and the colours and dots well. and dots and marks and yeah. globules of paint and all of those sorts yeah. of things. So a 3D effect. Really creating a, a, a very realistic look at it. Which has been something. Yeah. Exactly. So, oh, so this one, this one goes to, I've been talking about this a lot, a lot myself. In fact, there's a key word I can't stay away from. <laughs> Biophilic. Biophilic design. design. Yeah. 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 So this seems to yeah. we I think you were you were trying to stay away from that word because it's you know it's almost too much in the media. But uh, how would you how would you explain biophilic? No, I mean there, there, there's a huge amount of, of, of um, influences really here with the, with the soft organics and things at the moment. Um, and we've seen it in firms and sort of gen, you know, I, what I would call sort of gentle patterns. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think that's extended into sort of the way we're living really, you know, where we're seeing a lot of inside outside yeah. stuff going on with foliage yeah beautiful beautiful glass elevations 
you know, stuffed their large plants in the background. Yes, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, and a lot of the sort of inside outside stuff going on. We've seen, um, you know, sort of um, planting going upwards. So, you know, um, green walls, I love um, green walls. you know, office in offices yeah. or features yeah. in hotels, yeah. haven't we? Yeah. Um, so we've seen, we, you know, in, in places across the world where, where, where planting is compromised, Middle East, for example, mm -hmm. you know, we've seen a lot of growing indoors and right. upwards, right? You yeah. know, so you've seen growing, you know, we've seen our lettuces being grown in trays under, under UV lights or whatever, yeah. you know, yeah. so there's a lot of clever thinking going on about, about green, et cetera. Even even to the point I think I've seen in recent years a lot more in Europe than I ever did before. I used to see it in the States quite a lot, but um, you know, uh, vegetables being used instead of plants, for example, mm -hmm. yeah. that kind of thing as well. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot more free thinking about the use of planting, isn't there? Mm -hmm. And I think you know, every, the, everybody has the capacity to, to do a bit of greenery, and I think that I think a lot of it is about having a, a calming influence on on the interior. You know, I think it, it's it's just, you know. The, the word sanctuary and cocooning and yeah. oasis, you know, or nature reserve, comes yeah. maybe yeah. Uh, 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 <laughs> collection, yeah, that come to mind. And, and as well, the general feeling of well being again, a big word through this last 12 months yeah. is, is you know, the consideration to our well being. Well, I think and how that's influenced you know a lot of interiors. First lockdown, I think the lock, different lockdowns have been difficult, haven't they? In the mm -hmm. UK, certainly, because you've had. Uh, um, sometime, actually mm -hmm. probably wonderful for a lot of people on furlough because they were out in the sunshine. Yeah. Yeah. But during the winter, mm -hmm. not easy, not nearly so easy. Um, and, you know, we've been stuck indoors an awful lot. Yeah. So, I think we felt a bit more dismal through this yeah. winter lockdown, you know, yeah, than we did through the summer. Though. Last, you know, last summer was was, was pretty okay, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Two or three months off was, 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 was quite nice. <laughs> yeah. So can we, do we want to, I mean, actually, maybe on the back of that, maybe we want to talk about tropical, because it, I guess it leads on a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah, so there's been an awful lot more tropical designs coming through, both in weave and print. Mm. Um, and I can't believe it's still gone on. You know, it seems, it seems yeah. to have been entrenched in our developments. <laughs> These well, kind of designs have been... two or three years now. It's just, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's incredible, really. Yeah, yeah. 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 so we yeah. Also, the scale of them, they're really like enlarging the scale to enhance the, the foliage and the, mm. sometimes even animals as well. Mm. So, like monkeys, birds, off. Oh, I think my, yeah. my LinkedIn yeah. feed is absolutely full with different yes. different animal designs, whether yes. some more cartoonish, some yeah. more, um, I guess, antiquated in, in the style. Yeah. 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 That's, That's yeah. a lovely one. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, and I can imagine that blowing up double size. Yeah. You know, on a headboard, yeah. you know, do it, do you, which is obviously, you know, where Print Lab comes in and where we can do all those super exciting things. You know, we, we, what I love about it, I mean, is that Luxor? Yeah, so this is my <laughs> another thing I've had on the I love it. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's not actually included in the, in the transfer print base cloth card just yet. No. It's going in now, the, the card is being updated. It's a beautiful upholstery velvet, super soft, super low pile, so it doesn't mark. The colours come out amazing as well. They do, yeah. yeah. You get real depth of colour. Yeah. Um, and I think that's interesting as well, because a lot of the time, the foliage and animal designs you see online mm. are in velvet. It's, mm. you know, it's like a warm texture. Mm. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not, it's not at all the, you know, hop sack, uh, jungly textures you would expect. It's, mm. on, it's on this high-end yeah. velvet look. Mm. Is there anything more we want to say about texture specifically, Elise? Um, no, we, 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 I think we've touched on texture, uh, but you know what, what we are seeing on texture is is you know sort of micro and macro. So yeah. you know we are seeing some lovely, yeah, we, we, we are seeing some lovely textures that are you know that, that do have more of a repeat as well. Yeah. So um, we did have something um, oh, that, that yeah. we that we sort of started, you know, in terms of development where where we are looking at bigger repeats on patterns yeah. um, and it's not just inherently the sort of dry thing, you know, yarns, slippy yarns and profiles and things that you're mm. seeing in, in the smaller general this textures. It's almost a little bit like yeah. this abstract, abstract uh, yeah. thing. I mean, for a little while back, yeah. there was an awful lot of this um, how to pixely, almost like an abstract version of, of uh, pixel art. You saw an awful lot, especially in I the mean, but, but, but if you think about it, this is where our, um, you know, sort of pulse an echo come in in yeah. our in yeah. our previous ranges really you know those are all the textures 
and the, the, the Eaton Square, for example, in Soho, again, small pixelated patterns. Yep. So, you know, texture has crept into our collections, mm. you know, really over the last sort of three or four years as we've introduced new lines in, I think in print and weave. At the, at the end of this session, we'll talk specifically about some of these things that Lisa and Demi are showing. Um, some of them are new ranges that are due out, you know, mm. uh, on, a, on a fixed schedule within this year. And I think just explain what they are and, and how they fit into the, the trends that we're talking about here. Mm. So just to move slightly on a tangent, because we've been talking about, I guess, um, aesthetic principles, really. Mm. Um, upcycling is mm. seems to be really in trend at the moment. And that's, I mean, that is a look, yeah. but also it's, it's pushing towards this sustainability idea, isn't it? It's, it's huge, yeah. isn't it? You know, absolutely huge, because we've, we've, we've not only seen it going on with our um, uh, developments in the interior world, but, but, but of course, again, massive in the fashion world. Yeah. You know, and I think, I think, I think it would be the, 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 the Stella McCartney's that, that, that have really, and the Gucci's, that have really put this at the front yeah. of, so of, of textiles like in general, general really. or How are you seeing it? It, it comes, it comes, you know, you can see upcycled denim. Yeah. You know, yeah. Up, upcycled denim. Prada just bought a beautiful skirt out, full length, floor length skirt out, you know, in, in patchwork denim. Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 I showed Demi <laughs> mine that I made 20 years ago Whoa, with, with my husband's, yeah. with my husband's yeah. old jeans at work, you know, so. It um, always comes around, it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's, you know it, it is so important. Yeah. You know all this stuff that's going to landfill. You know we've got to be thinking about ways of regenerating all of this, um, and you know it's a it's a big thing. Link link to that is that the whole sort of craft element again, yeah. as we sort of rewind a little bit back in history and we think about crochet, we think a little bit about um, block printing yeah. and yeah. quilting, you know, all of those sorts of things are making a, a, re resurrection, a resurrection. And the nice thing is that you're actually seeing this you're actually seeing the designers doing this as well yeah. in the fashion world. And of course, it's, it's, it's a big thing. So it's all, through. it, it, it all ties thing. into a much broader thing, doesn't it? There's an interest in sustainability. There's been, whether, that, whether it's down to um, people losing their jobs through lockdowns or what have you, but certainly artisan crafts, you know, websites yeah. like Etsy, yeah. Yeah. huge yeah, now, yeah. you know, so people, uh, you know, doing things on a smaller scale, doing things a little bit, you know, a little bit more focused, a bit more designed. Mm. Um, but yeah, fascinating. I think the, the patchwork thing, you know, patch, that definitely comes back to that 70s side again, doesn't it? Yeah, 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 cool. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and I suppose t t together with that, um, we, we have this kind of bohemian look really where we sort of got old with new, yeah. you know. So, you know, interesting, there was a program last night on the v &A, and they were they were looking at, they were in the archives, for example, yeah. and they were bringing out this this piece of, of of sculpture that was that was ancient, but but when they took it into the room in the V and A, the room was painted like a shop, I think. Oh, cool. So you know there is there is this magic go on between uh, you know putting old antique things yeah. into beautiful new yeah. clean yeah. Um, it, uh, interiors. So you know and and, and it, it has a lot of impact. You know you've got sort of nostalgia with it. With, with the new features and, and the new colours coming through. Yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking about some of the ways that um, boutique hotels have been done, or maybe sometimes small chains and boutique hotels mm -hmm. have, have probably used that kind of aesthetic or that thinking yeah. to uh, make uh, or make reference to their locations. Let's say it's in Lisbon and they, you know, they have some yeah. uh, reference to the historical location while still being a really kind of yeah. modern. Local. Yeah, and often that takes the form of uh, yeah, maybe it's a printed fabric or a printed headboard or, or laminate or something with with text, with imagery, um, lots of different things. Maybe you know, for, for Lisbon, uh, it will be tile design, won't it? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. so that that kind of thing. I think I think travellers when when they are moving around the world, I think they want to connect with with the with the locality. They want to connect with the country. Yeah. It's not about being in, you know in a, in a um, an anonymous corporate hotel that that says nothing about where I you are in this world. Right. Yeah. You know, I think it's it's about having the character. It's about being local. Mm. You know, and a lot of hotels are also doing things like um, 
bringing local people in. So you might want to learn to play the guitar if you're in Barcelona, yeah. or yeah. you know, learn to paint tiles. It's like they're they're the experiences, kind of thing. all those yeah. sorts of things that are, are really becoming part of the culture. We're seeing that from some of the really big brands because you know, in the past, you built yeah. was like yeah. you know, maybe yeah. a, a McDonald's yeah. style. You went there yeah. because you knew exactly what you were getting, yeah. right? Yeah, you know, but in a, a bit nicer than. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's the idea. Whereas. We'll see, we're seeing now a lot of these big brands uh, offering new brands that are maybe aimed at exactly that demographic, the young demographic that prizes, you know, a bit more interest, a bit more interest in the locality, a bit mm -hmm. about experience. You get your canopies by Anthems, you get your Moxie by Marriott, all of these mm -hmm. kinds of brands. So, yeah. 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 Demi, we talked about British heritage yeah. already, but I know this, this is one that you really like. Yeah, this is quite a big one. So people like Companies like Cold and Stone, House of Hackney, they're all doing this, mm -hmm. like this British heritage. And they do it very well, don't yeah. they? Yeah, the it's colours. Lovely, it's are, a lovely look. Yeah. So what kind of thing in terms of colour, design? Colour and design. I think colour is like one of the big things in it as well, like mixing colours you will really think as well, yeah. which actually work really well. Yeah. And then also like the design, so the mixing like the history, Bit of like historical, really, as well. Oh, like, a lot of them are archival yeah. patterns, yeah. aren't they? So you know, there's a lot of interest in in, in those old archives. Yeah. Some of them are coloured. Yeah. As Demi was saying, you know, yeah. intimating in, in in those you know sort of bright, more more funky sort yeah. of colours, aren't they? And then, is there, and then when you come back to this the, the historical interest, is there a particular period of time? You know, is it Regency pattern? Is it you know, is, is there a particular period of time that people are seizing on? Or? Well, that's an interesting question. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> old, 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 I would yeah. say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, certainly two, three hundred years old. Yeah, and, yeah. And, you know, and, and I think also when you think about what Collinson have done with yeah. wallpapers, some of their old, old wallpapers have been old block prints. Yeah. yeah. You know, people like Liberty, you yeah. know, some of their patterns have been block prints. Yeah. William you know, Morris so as well. William Morris again, you yeah. know, we saw, we saw the Sanderson. Um, um, block printing machine in in, in the design archives so yeah. in Chelsea yeah. Harbour, yeah. Yeah. you know, actually printing with the old blocks, yeah. you know. So I, we we go back hundreds of years, I think, with this oh. with this look, um, and 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 I, and I think it's very nice. I think those companies that are doing it, Utah Rose and well. so on, are, are doing it yeah. very well and, and and are successful at yeah. capturing that look. Yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. So you've got something here called you've you've highlighted it as new modernity, and I have a clue what you mean by that. So will someone will someone care to explain what you mean by new modernity? <laughs> Just clean, yeah. clean, yeah. crisp, you know, crisp lines. Um, usually neutral colours. When I say neutral, I mean warm and cool. Um, you pops of colour, you know, speaking volumes in terms of maybe a rug or a, a feature chair. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and I, I always say Kelly Hoffman does this superbly, really, you know, and she, she'll mix it with some luxurious coral or marble, maybe a hint of metallic, um, but 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 generally a very stylish, right. clean So what of kind of, obviously stepping yeah. outside the fabrics, what kind of materials are you, are you talking about within that look? So certainly, you would. I think you would typically see any one of our dim outs, for example, yeah. or black outs. No, I mean, I mean, for you example, know, so like outside of fabric. So let's say hard surfaces and things like that. What again? You know, a, a marble or a wooden floor or a plush rug. Yeah. yeah. You know, so so nice textures. Yeah. But 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 very considered. I think. Right. You know, would would would, would so be would paying be attention to the pieces essentially. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 of course, it's modern. It's not cluttered. Yeah. It's not like the bohemian look that, that, that could be a little bit more flooded, but it, it's a clean look. You know, maximum you might get a check and a stripe in there, but generally it's a play on texture, it's a play on colour. Yeah. Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a very crisp chic. You know, so this is where, I mean, it, luckily enough, I think for, for contract, our products probably play into that quite well because they are based predominantly at least in the in the stock ranges around textures and, and planes yeah. and also also when we think about our best sellers yeah. you know this is where this look is very much where our best sellers sit in terms of yeah. the neutrals so the yes. warm neutrals <laughs> and the cool neutrals you know that's where the volume is essentially yeah. and typically we would pepper then our, our, our plain lines with some pops of colour yeah. um, that, that were a little bit more on tarragons and citrines at the moment, obviously yeah. huge. Yeah. So, and you said it's, yeah, you know, greens. and the navies and the blue, you know, some of the blues and yeah, the greens, absolutely. Greens, all, all, all greens. Yeah. yeah. 
Walgreens. All Walgreens. Oh, yeah. green you know, one green. thing that I know we're skipping ahead a little bit, but <laughs> one thing that's really lovely about the Velvet line, um, Sensation, I think I've already mentioned it. And in fact, probably a sample. I'm, I'm done. Yeah. 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 Is what's so lovely about this is that in a velvet, it's completely natural to go for a colour, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Um, where, you know, not that not that I have anything against silver grey, but silver grey is absolutely what everybody buys and everything else. Uh, or, or like a tertiary neutral, as you mentioned, Lisa. But mm. in uh, in something like the velvet blackout, it's the, like you say, greens, jade yeah. green, oak mm. green. Old. And the ochre, okay, let's not forget the ochre, yeah, okay, which has really been good. Yeah. Um, Indigo is really strong dual yeah. tone, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Just before we do actually move on to talk a bit more about colour though, um, we, we have touched on, you know, global influences on travel. Um, are there any other kind of key locations that are playing into 2021's mentality at the moment? Um, no, I, I mean, we, 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 we've, ha we've had a sort of hit of, of, of the African sort of look, you know, where we've had heartbreaking yeah, and some very dry sacking yeah. sort, of, sort of looks, you know. We've, We've had um, the tiles, mm. um, um, mm. Turkish and and Moroccan. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there's an element of this, you know, sort of Scandinavian again. I guess that sort of partly comes into the sort of new modernity sort of look. You know, Clean when they yes. a much cleaner, yeah. natural, um, light, lighter colours again, not not quite so dark. Yeah. Um, and, and that's very really interesting you're saying that. We're going to talk about some of the new things upcoming, aren't we? But um, we actually did recently make some some swaps in colour toward a lighter palette on some of the upcoming jacquards. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, you know, you mentioned greens. Greens because biophilia or what do you think yes, behind yeah. that? Yes, Fiona. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And you like to use that word? <laughs> Recycling as well. Yes. I think I think it's this whole green thing yeah. that's around green. You yeah. know, I think it's you know, let's you know, green goes with everything, doesn't yeah. it? You know, it's it's outside, it sits with everything. You've really got to embrace all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, I have and many plants in every room at home. It right, goes yeah, with everything. Right. <laughs> yeah. and, and all all nice as well. All tones of green. Yeah. You know, from the lovely kind of avocado, aloe vera, willow, you know, through into the citrines, yeah. you know, and, and it used to be that, that you know, we, we'd have greens in the, the plain ranges, middle greens, uh, often for kind of central Europe, and that was pretty much the preserve of, mm. of green, but now, yeah, you say, it's much yeah. broader. Emeralds, of course, and, and yeah, the, the jewel yeah. terms as yeah. well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the dark forests and khaki, khaki sort of colours, you know. Um, and, um, you know, yeah, I think the whole green, green thing is, is you know, sort of all about that, really. And then we touched on, I guess, a variation on that theme on the green tarragon ochre colours as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, yeah, so, and, and um, um, yeah, and, and then, and then, you know, to, to cheer us all up, you know, that we do get these pops of colours, you know, sort of coming through, I think. Um, so what... Obviously, I've just talked about sensation. This is this is a new range is doing exceedingly well to begin with, mm -hmm. um, and you know much broader in terms of interest in colour than most of our blackout ranges, where the bulk of sale is on tertiary neutrals and greys and what have you. But what what are contract colours for you guys? You know what do you see most used in hotels and care homes? And are, are there specific colours that I think always the warm, cool neutrals yeah. always sell well with the contract colours, definitely. Yeah. I think it's because you can put any colour with them as well. Like if it, there was a feature chair, you could put a print, for example, yeah. with bright colours or even just a pop of yellow or any colour. So I think the warm and cool is yes, a bit more timeless than a, than a, you know, a bright colour as well. Yeah. You don't know whether the hot pink is really going to be that no. hot five years down the line. Yeah. But and, and it's and I, I suppose that's always the dichotomy of of, of putting colours together really for us, you know, because it's not just about what, what colour's doing right now, yeah. it's really about what colour's going to do moving forward. Yeah. Um, and, and that's where our trend intelligence would really feed into our decision making, I think, as we as, as we sort of get to that okay. final decision, you know. So we've just talked a load about what colours are doing now. Have you got any top tips <laughs> for what's coming down the line? Um, I mean, I, th I think I think we're still really in the room for for, for the sort of greens and the blues, yeah. you know, and again, and again, all all tones of those, you know. Are you going to continue to see? Because I have to say, in in dealing with specifiers and dealing with contractors, mm -hmm. there is a lot of this particular colour palette, which is blush with yeah. teal, 
yeah. or mineral yeah. with copper. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Are we still going to yes. see that going down yeah. the line? Yeah, I, I, I think, I think, no, no doubt we will. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, and I think, um, you know, the, the whole, the whole sort of mid to dark blue scale. I think is always a, you know, a nice place to see. Less of the lighter blues, mm -hmm. more, more of the mid and the, and the darker yeah. blues. Sure. Um, and you know, certainly the ochres. You know, yellow, yellow and grey is yeah. the other Pantone colours. The, uh, the sort of short, by the way, happened to be our brand colours. <laughs> <laughs> that was clever of Pantone, wasn't it? Um, so, um, <laughs> so I think, yeah. so next, so we've really had a really good route through, I guess, um, aesthetic trends. Mm. But we did say at the start that we wanted to talk a little bit about what other kind of trends there are. Are there trends in terms of, you know, um, the performance features that people are looking for? Or the ways they choose to use fabrics, or anything else like that. I, 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 I certainly think for us in the contract world, um, you know, performance features are, are probably fairly much top of the list, list of a lot of specifiers. You know, these days, particularly the recycled thing, yeah, and mm -hmm. the recycled content, mm -hmm. a percentage of or a hundred percent. Um, Definitely. Linked with that are the, the, the added features, you know, so stain repellency, washability, yeah. antimicrobial, um, antimicrobial, antimicrobial of yeah. course, you know, all of those sorts of things that are very current. I think if I notice one thing myself, it's actually that specifiers are more active in, yeah, well, I guess in, in checking for performance features at the start of the process, yeah. you know, yeah. more so than in the past where the, the Emphasis was aesthetic. Mm. Um, mm. You know, people would be choosing from boxes of samples based on the colour and the look. Mm. Um, well, I mean, a, a lot of that will also be driven by by their, you know, the, them wanting to sell the benefits of the green features, of course, yeah, that they yeah. have bought into their schemes, yeah. whether it be hospitality or whether it be, um, you know, healthcare really. So, and healthcare more more prominently right now. You know, if we're selling product with you know, the antimicrobial features, and obviously it's, it's good USP yeah. for us moving forward, I think. I think it is actually kind of nice that, especially as we get more and more embroiled in specification and understanding the needs of specification, it's nice that things as important as sustainability are being pushed through by the designers, yeah. you know? Uh, yeah. that they have so much sway in the process. Mm. Uh, mm. And, uh, you know, it's if everything was only profit driven, then it would never happen. <laughs> so it's nice that this is happening. It, it influences us positively, it influences the, the end result positively as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. So should we talk a little bit then about, you know, one major change, obviously, this year that you've touched on already, Lisa, is mm. uh, the fact that everything's digital, you know. Um, Yes. So, you know, we've got I no think, I think we've all had to upskill tremendously, really, <laughs> haven't we, as far as, you know, what, 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 doing what, 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 <laughs> we, 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 yeah, what happens on, 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 the, you know, on the computer, what we can do on the computer, you know, there, there, there's no doubt, you know, that, that, that we, this was coming, mm. you know, this whole kind of digital era was coming, but yeah. I think it's really been fast-tracked through us. the, through the last, you know, sort of 12 months. Mm. Um, and, you know, I think, I think, I think it's all, it, it's got to have had its benefit. Carbon footprint, undoubtedly. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mine yeah. alone. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think, you know, and also I think it's, it's forced us to, to make considered choices about, or I think it will do, about whether we actually need to go and do that journey impulsively, you know, and how much more can we do with, with some of those meetings that were further afield yeah. before we actually get there. Yeah. Undoubtedly, we want to get there and we want to have face-to-face -face And meeting. even people being more frugal, even in, you know, in the smaller sense, with sampling, for instance, mm -hmm. absolutely no point in having a giant library or, or multiple copies of a giant library mm -hmm. when, um, you know, you're working from home typically or, yeah. you know, you're frugal with the sampling. So people are often working from a digital library to PDFs, something like our Fabric Hub, what have you. Yeah. Um, and they get sent to them exactly what they, they need. But that, and, that, and that's also gotten a lot, a lot better. Mm -hmm. You know, the whole presentation thing via Zoom, you know, on yeah. a digital platform has, has, has really helped a lot of companies. It's, helped, it's tremendously helped mills who have really embraced that technology. Yeah. You know, we've seen the onset of things like CGI. You know, again, all of those sorts of things have really accelerated through this period. And also, um, I guess... Um, you know, obviously, Lisa, you're in a different position because you can, when you speak to a mill, you can say, this is what I want 
you know, this is what I want it to look like and this is how you're going to achieve it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the vast majority of designers will have something in their mind, but not being fabric specialists, because you can't be a specialist in everything, mm -hmm. um, don't necessarily know exactly how it will be achieved. We've got better, and I think mm -hmm. the industry has got better mm -hmm. at taking a brief and quickly giving you a result. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I think it's tomorrow. Is it Amy that we're going to be talking about uh, uh, Print Lab, our custom printing yeah. process? Tomorrow at half nine. 9.30 GMT tomorrow. Okay, yeah. so that's worth uh, kind of tuning into because yeah. it's, uh, it's going to be Demi and Lisa explaining through the entire process, which is very sick now, you know, which yeah. allows the designer to come on and say, this is what I have in mind, this is approximately when and what's needed, uh, and, and we come back with on a platter, <laughs> yeah. basically. Yeah. And that's uh, industry-wide, I think, it's a lot better than it used to be. Yeah. yeah. So, Digital, the reason behind this digital requirement is we can't travel so much, we're all working from home. Uh, anything more to say? How has that affected you guys? I mean, we're, we're, fortunately we're able to come into work, you know, and I think a lot of what we do is reliant on being in, in touch with fabrics and particularly down on the print side, you know, that, yeah, that's, that's been a necessity. Awesome. necessity. Yeah. And, 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 you know, myself really on the weave side, again, uni yarns, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you know, I think I think this whole kind of um, home working sort of situation has has sort of thrown up a number of challenges for for, for for all of us really in terms of what do our homes look like? You know, we have this whole thing, you know, this phenomena chromatopia, which is which has come about, you know, about the fluidity of spaces and and so that means that's what the it fluidity means. of spaces. <laughs> yeah. And you know how how how. Um, we, we change our space and our environment to, to, to be something different at different times of yeah. the day or on different days. Even. I remember you know, I remember years ago staying in a hotel, I think in probably San Francisco, I can't remember mm -hmm. exactly which it was, but um, at the time I was amazed that they had rooms that were also gyms. So they had a yeah. corner of the room uh -huh. with... Yeah. you know, exercise, bike, uh, yeah. bells, all sorts of stuff. Yeah. And yeah. I've never seen that before. Mm. Whereas that kind of thing, mm. and multi-purpose room is mm. the it's sweet. Going to be yeah. more you, 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 have, you have phrases called pleasure. You know, the, the, you, have, you have, you know, industry reading all about by the Futures Laboratory, you know, where they're talking about um, combining mm. business and leisure yep. in, a, in a vacation. You know, okay. because because you, you you've got people going places yeah. that want to just dive in, in into, into business yeah. and, and and out of business. You know, as a, as and enjoy a, the when they, as well. and when they need it. You yeah. know, you're you're probably going to see more of hotel rooms with little bits of gyms in because mm -hmm. nobody wants to go to a gym where you've got the next person on a bike who's coughing and sputtering <laughs> and sweating all <laughs> over you. Yes. You know, so yeah. there'll be a little bit more of that. You yeah. know, so um, this whole kind of chronotopia phenomena is going to be much bigger, I think, in, in all of our lives. You yeah. know, we've, we've seen our homes become um, gyms and cinemas and yeah. restaurants and schools for some schools, people. Schools, yeah. yeah. I mean, working environments, you know, our, our homes have become everything. And that's on a, that's on a micro level. Yeah. You know, we've also got this whole phenomenon about what our office is going to do as more people are going to be working from home. Yeah. You know, what will our offices look like? You know, will there be places to deep dive into? I'm know, deeply so hopeful that building Emma, relationships. Yeah. Emma Bell is going to go the route of bean bags and <laughs> ping pong tables. We're not quite as Google as all that yet, are we? But I think it's, we'll get it's coming. We'll get there. <laughs> yeah. A lot, a lot of, a lot of interesting thinking about what's going to go on. I think around that theme. Yeah. Um, and you know, what's what, what impact is that going to have on fabrics? You know, are we want to be? Are, will we want to think about having? Um, uh, acoustic panels in our homes yeah. Yeah. because a couple of years ago we stripped them out, put in the wooden floor, embraced yeah. this one oh, living this type space of thing. as much as possible. You know, and yeah. now we've got a school in there. We've got you know, daddy on a on a um, on a, uh, an office, mummy in an office, yeah. and, and you know, all of this sort of stuff leading to be absolutely. The whole, you know, I think we're not, we're not only going to see that in the contract world, but we'll also start to see it. The designers yeah. will embrace that for the for the, for the and then use it as space as well. I would assume as well. Yeah. You know? I mean, I'm totally blessed. I have a really large garden, but uh, it's not everyone. So it's again bringing the outside inside, using outside yeah. space a little bit and differently. Lots of interesting stuff. Happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think probably it's come about time just to 
tease people with some new stuff. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah, I think probably. Um, I think. Are we going to talk, talk about maybe the jackpots first? Little, 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 little bit of, of, of interesting. We are um, to, to make it clear. The next session actually is a whole thing about new product. We're going to take you through together with our UK contract manager Steve, and we're going to take you through. Um, a little a quick overview of the range as it stands because it's a bit broader than most people know uh, nowadays and then we're going to show you in depth about different products but especially with the jackards um jackards are really the designers babies <laughs> <laughs> and i'd like them to explain i guess a little bit of the motivation behind each of these new things that are yeah. upcoming yeah. within this year so we we, we, we the, the first one is a, is a very nice kind of um it, it's got a, a sort of quilted look um, a slightly 3D structure, I think, in, in, you know, embracing the, the, the sort of textured look, but um, in, in, a, in a more kind of 3D sort of way, really. Just show it off to the camera. Um, <laughs> I don't know if they can see. A, a, a tiny little bit. Um, so, so it's got a very nice sort of geometric pattern. And, and, you know, whilst this is going to be great for things like bed runners, mm. accessories, yeah. um, we have a name cushions, for them, this is called, this is Connect. Um, you know, it's it it also has a great Martindale, right? Believe it or not, so it's actually going to cross over very nicely, I think. Um, so that's something that we've been re aiming for with the Jacquard and Wee collections, yeah. isn't it? That they're mm -hmm. multifunction. Yes. Yeah. You know, you can yeah. put them in loads of different settings. Yeah. And 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 of course, this is this is inherent. Yeah. Um, so you know, will be good for for you know that sort of quilted headboard look. Um, you know, accessorise with the bed runner. You could have it on an accent chair. But again, it's not. Um, I mean, it's it's not quilted per se. It's actually relatively it's low. It's just got yeah. that night. No, it's yeah. not quilted. It's the it's construction subtle. allows it to, to, to take on that character. Yeah. Um, and then thereafter, we have we have a very nice um, sort of abstract um, jacquard with. Um, I don't, you probably can't see this so terribly well, but you will um, later on. Yeah, it's, I think you can um, see it. it's like. And I think yeah. it's, you know it's got some very nice. It's it's mark, sort of mark making. It's yeah. it's it's abstract lines. It's got more a, directional than things that we've offered in the past. Actually, yeah, it, it it is. Yeah. It's got um, you know a, a very nice textured line to it, mm. um, and you know a, a, a good range of of, of sort of. Warm and cool neutrals. We're seeing those colours um, we talked about with yeah, lush, yeah, yeah. teal, exactly. gingers in there. Slightly, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the sort of marine um, blues. And, and this is this is called Limit. Um, and um, uh, yeah, inherent, of course, fully, fully inherent. The other thing just to point out is the reason that we're you know, making a focus of the jacquards. Um, we have this binder, I think it's number four now, weave. Uh, it includes a couple of linings, it includes jacquards, it includes single drapes, uh, everything that we wouldn't probably put in the light control binder. But, you know, again, as multifunction, it's something that you can use as, you know, bedspread, uh, as balance, all these different things that we didn't have solutions for before. We wanted to make sure that all of the practical points, uh, all the ASPs uh, that we tick off for you are available for that kind of setting as well. Mm -hmm. This and one's my favourite. The, 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 the last one is, is, is called twist um so it, it's a small it's a small structured and um, I'm, going to, I'm going to show this one to the camera ge geometric <laughs> <laughs> so you can see this is a very shiny particular colorway isn't it this is silver gray but we've got other um, colorways but yeah we, have, we we do we do have other colorways um, and, and a nice mix of colorways where we we have been able to actually bring in the the, the green yep. um you know we've got some dark um, um blue coming into some colourways and... Um, this is the article where we made the switch towards predominantly lighter colourways though, wasn't it? Because we, we did have we, it quite dark. We, we'll add, yes, yeah. we'll, we'll add, you know, one or two lighter sort of colourways, but, but we do have a good range. So this, this is, is a great box accessorising. It's so lovely. This is a great cushion, cushion. And, and an accent chair, of yeah. course, you know, it's going to look fab on it. This is something I can see used in the Middle East a lot, you know, it, it kind of plays a little bit on that almost Moorish, I guess, almost as long yeah, it's, like, it's absolutely, absolutely, it Beautiful. Takes, on that, takes on that look, doesn't it? Mm. Okay, um, well, I think we're going to probably hang on to our prints, yeah. talk about in the print lab uh, session tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I really hope you will uh, join us for that. It's going to be very interesting. 
Um, but thank you very much for spending time with us today. Um, Lisa and Demi will continue to work in the background. And of course, if you have any questions for them, then you can fire those at us too, uh, and we'll be sure to answer. Mm -hmm. So join us later for some more sessions, and thank you very much.